On July the 29th, 2016, hackers compromised the information systems at two biggest airports of Vietnam, namely Nội Bài and Tân Sơn Nhất. On information screens at the two airports, hackers displayed deceptive territorial information on the East Sea, insulting both Vietnam and the Philippines. At the same time, the official website of the national carrier Vietnam Airlines was also attacked. The hackers not only changed the content of the website, but also collected and released personal information of more than 400,000 frequent customers of the airline. At the end of the day, Vietnamese authorities managed to control what is considered the biggest strike to the local aviation information system in history. The attacker's identity that appeared on the website of Vietnam Airlines was 1937CN, which is the most notorious team of hackers in China and is responsible for many previous assaults to Vietnamese websites. Hàng không là một trong những ngành mà cái yêu cầu về an ninh rất là là, là cao. Cái mức độ an toàn an ninh là cao nhất. À, thì đó là quy định là như vậy, nhưng thực tế thì chúng ta thấy là 1937CN cũng đã xâm nhập vô hệ thống sân bay mà không phải một sân bay mà hiện ra nguyên cái hệ thống sân bay của Việt Nam thì uh, họ đã xâm nhập vào sân bay được thì tôi nghĩ là họ vẫn có khả năng xâm nhập vào những cái hệ thống còn lại của Việt Nam ví dụ như là những cái hệ thống uh, cho phép giao dịch trực tuyến như là Internet Banking của ngân hàng hoặc là những cái hệ thống uh, thuế điện tử của bên Cục Thuế cho phép là doanh nghiệp nộp thuế According to the Vietnamese Ministry of Public Security more than 10,000 websites with Vietnamese domain registration was attacked with control being hijacked, interface being altered and malware being inserted last year, up 68% from 2014. Most of the attackers are said to come from outside the country. According to Vietnam-based BKAV tech firm, damage caused by computer viruses to Vietnamese users last year amounted to 8.7 trillion dollars up from 8.5 trillion dollars in 2014. The calculation was based on the user's income and the length of their work disruption due to the viruses. Cyber threats are forecasted to be increasingly complex for Vietnam, which is seeing rapid growth of internet services, active international economic integration and existing territorial tensions on the East Sea. The situation requires Vietnamese businesses to quickly strengthen their awareness and measures to ensure cybersecurity, which is regarded as a matter of survival in the modern economy. Hello and welcome to Sharing Vietnam. As the internet is growing rapidly in Vietnam with booming online services, local businesses are facing serious cyber threats. In our program today, we'll explore the current situation of cyber security awareness in Vietnam, as well as the uh, development of cyber resilience for local companies. Our guest today is Mr. Alan Citring, a principal of uh, Risk Masters International Consulting Firm. So, uh, hello, Mr. Citrin. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, Mr. Citrin, a group of hackers recently compromised the information systems at major airports in Vietnam, as well as the website and uh, VIP passenger data of uh, national flag carrier Vietnam Airlines. What do you think of the seriousness of this incident? Well, it's very serious, as any hack is. But it's actually not unique as a hack. If it's unique, it's only unique because people know about it. We don't know that as we're speaking, there aren't other hacks being successful here and elsewhere around the world that are taking people's information. So I think it's important to put it in the perspective of a warning sign, but not a specific instance by itself to react to. How do we learn from this and make the systems better for everybody? Uh, one area is to alert the appropriate international organizations that deal with air traffic safety. We have not had any reports that there was a safety compromise, but anything that comes even close to a safety compromise, the international organization should be alerted. Then the government, working with the airlines, should engage some of the global experts who are, whose business is to be hired at times like this 
to pursue a detailed analysis to understand where the hack came from, where the weaknesses are, and where the vulnerabilities are. And the third thing is this should hopefully encourage Vietnam to embark on a long-term program to improve the overall cyber readiness of the country, which starts in the businesses and the organization and the government, but goes through to all the people of the country, because cybersecurity is everyone's job. So from your interactions with companies in Vietnam, what do you think of their current level of awareness of cybersecurity? It, it, it's a different question now than two weeks ago, because the airline hack changed everything. So now I think everyone is aware, but I think that they're not sure where to go and what to do. And so the good news is people are paying attention. And now people like myself can present. Uh, I can't tell a Vietnamese com country or company what to do, but I can offer advice and guidance based on practices elsewhere. And people here now need to hopefully listen to that, learn from that, work with the government standards that you talked about, take advantage of the awareness and the concern and the fear in industry, and develop a solution that works for Vietnam. On August the 18th, Vietnam Report Joy Stock Company held a workshop for Vietnamese IT managers called Vietnam CIO Summit 2016 in Hanoi. The event focused on cyber resilience and its practical application to protect businesses from cyber attacks. The key speaker is Alan Citrin, with more than 30 years of experience in cyber information protection and security, especially his leadership in dealing with the consequences of terrorist attacks in New York and London. Mr. Citrin shared the latest information on cyber resilience, which remains a new concept in Vietnam and many other Southeast Asian countries. The key element of the concept is that apart from securing their infrastructure, businesses should be able to maintain their operations continuously during and after an attack. Với một cái buổi seminar này thì nó thống nhất được các vấn đề về lý luận đối với các từ các IT để họ hiểu chính xác hơn họ nên làm cái gì và làm như thế nào thậm chí trong lâu. Vì với mô hình mạng linh hoạt này thì họ có thể sử dụng cách uh, chặt chẽ hơn để bảo vệ hệ thống trước các các cuộc tấn công uh, một cách rất là chủ động. Vấn đề lớn nhất của mô hình mạng này là các vấn đề về chi phí. Khi đầu tư mô hình mạng này, tức là mình phải chia nhỏ hệ thống ra các phân mảng khác nhau, các segment khác nhau, thì khi phân nhỏ thì cái chi phí về vấn đề này rất là lớn. Thì uh, nếu như mà đội ngũ IT với dưới, dưới sự hỗ trợ của ban giám đốc, thì họ có thể làm được mô hình này chúng tôi muốn đưa đến là không chỉ mang tính chất là về đề cập đến vấn đề về an ninh mạng và bảo mật an ninh mạng mà hướng đến xây dựng hẳn một cái một mô hình mà làm sao mà ứng phó và sống chung được với 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 vấn đề an ninh mạng vấn đề vấn đề về rủi ro trong trên trên mạng đó mới là cái mô hình bền vững đó mới là cái mô hình mà có thể mà hỗ trợ cho các hoạt động kinh doanh của doanh nghiệp có thể diễn ra một cách suôn sẻ Mr. Citrin said Vietnam is undergoing a rapid process of IT application and development in many areas such as e-government, e-payment and e-commerce. The collaboration between the government and businesses in protecting cyber safety is crucial, in which the government needs to encourage and support businesses to develop cyber resilience. While well, Mr. Citrin, um, cyber resilience has become a global trend in recent years. So how is it different from cyber security and how important is it to Vietnamese businesses? Security is part of cyber resilience. But the world has evolved to where people understand that hacks happen all the time. The head of the FBI in the United States said there are only two types of companies, those that know they've been hacked and those that do not know they've been hacked. And at any point you may be hacked. So security alone is not enough. It is the full range of activities to protect your business from the consequence of a hack. So cyber resilience deals with the security to protect yourself, ensuring that it is advanced security, it deals with planning to deal with a hack when a hack occurs, and it borrows many principles from business continuity and disaster recovery. So cyber resilience deals with securing yourself, 
engaging all of your people as part of the solution, as part of the defense, and with making yourself resilient so that if you do experience a hack, the risks and the costs are minimized and your ability to respond is maximized. In the airport, it took three days to restore to normal operation. Maybe they had a plan, maybe that was the best they can do, but maybe they didn't have a plan. Maybe if they had a plan, they could have restored in a few hours. I don't know, but that's what Cyber Resilient is all about. The range of activities to sustain operation in a cyber threat world. What do you think are some major types of businesses that have a great potential need of cyber resilience and what is your advice for them to develop cyber resilience? Well, there are two ways of looking at that. Clearly, the consequence of a hack is much greater in certain businesses. So if it's anything related to the government work, to security, to health care, to finance, these are all very important. However, many of these companies depend on suppliers that produce very tiny things that may not seem important. But if the supplier systems are hacked, that may cause the larger businesses to be hacked. So we can talk about importance in terms of the consequence, but importance in terms of ownership of the problem, everybody's part of the, everybody's an owner of the problem. Vietnam is a low-income developing country where businesses normally have limited resources. So what do you think of the challenges for local companies to develop cyber resilience? Well, I think the challenge is attitude, believe it or not. Money is always an object, and as a CIO, I never had an unlimited budget. There was always more that I could do that I could not afford. But you need to first start with the commitment that you're going to do it. It is amazing once you set yourself with a goal, the money becomes available, the resources become available, you juggle your priorities. But more importantly, the most important things that can be done are the least cost. They're about training people and about basic investments in process. If you have a business that does not have secure passwords, if you have a business that does not change passwords regularly, if you have a business with unlicensed software that's not patched or software that is licensed but not patched, you're doing tremendous damage to your business. And fixing those costs almost nothing. These do not require major infrastructure changes. They do not require major purchase of equipment. Well, recently, Vietnamese authorities have uh, enforced a regulation that makes it compulsory for companies to develop cybersecurity at some levels. So what do you think of this measure and uh, some other solutions for the government to support uh, local companies in uh, ensuring cyber resilience? Well, I think that's outstanding. I think that clearly is a goal, a role that government has, which is to set a standard and set an expectation. Uh, we're seeing something similar in the U.S. It's not necessarily directly a law by the government, but different government agencies are setting different thresholds and different standards and different expectations. So where a company, say five years ago, could say, didn't know, now the standards are there to say, didn't know is not good enough. You have an expectation. And, so, and if there's participation of the, of the industry in setting the standards and reviewing the standards with the government each year, I think it is a superb way to move the country forward to make it a cyber secure and a cyber resilient country. Mm -hmm. Mr. Citrin, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing valuable information. It's my pleasure. Well, that's all for our Sharing Vietnam today. Hopefully, with the efforts of local companies and the government, uh, cyber resilience will soon be improved in Vietnam in order to ensure business growth and national security. Thank you very much for watching and see you again next time.